Hey, Aaron. Um, hey, thanks for uh, going over this whole thing. And uh, like I said, what I think I'm going to do then is take your redo on it and the video and throw that into the training. And just uh, as I said in my note, I said, you know, hey, uh, you know, this is why I need somebody else to look at it, get a second set of eyes, get, um, you know, a female set of eyes if you're a guy, that kind of thing. I'll tell you, the one thing that you did that I really noticed that was so different than what I was going for is your spacing. I I tend to try to push things together more, and you really kind of took them apart. Now, we had tested the green um, originally, not on this page, but on the first page. We had tested the green, and immediately we were like, wow, that looks way too Christmassy. And so that's why I shied away from any other colors is – it just seemed to be clashing too much. But once you throw that green in the background, then you can kind of put it in here and it works a lot better instead of the monochromatic thing that I had going on. Uh, especially, I see it's my mom's birthday tomorrow. I better not forget that. Um, especially down here, it, it kind of works. But let me, uh, the, the real reason I shot this is to show you the simplicity of putting one section inside of somewhere else. And I had said this in the video that I sent to you uh, yesterday, but I don't think you probably caught it. And it's something I've been doing a lot is because inside of a section, you obviously have one or two more layers of what you can do in a section. And so why not take advantage of that? Where I started doing this is like with three column rows. So you got three column rows but you build it as an entire section, or you can even actually build each one of the columns in your three column row as an individual section, and then inject it into a column, into a three column row above it. So you take all the advantages, all the layers that you can get inside of that section, and then you inject it into the column above. And so then you, you basically, instead of having let's say three layers, which is actually more than that. But let's say you have three layers, you actually end up with like six layers. And so you could do so much more cool stuff as far as putting in borders and background colors and things like that. But oh, to the point of background color, let me show you something <clears throat> which will get you to stop using that green as a background color. Watch here when this page loads, I'm gonna load it incognito. You're gonna see it splash green first and then the image is gonna come up. Okay, so my suggestion would be make all of your backgrounds black. That way, especially on a mobile device or something, it, they won't even notice it because how CSS loads is it loads the background color first and then it overrides it with the background image. So the background image will always take precedent, but it loads later. So you want to set the, set the color to black. Otherwise, you're going to get that splash of green like that. And at least for me, I, I don't much care for that. But, um, okay, so how you do this is simple. Um, here, the section, oh, come on, work. We got section. Uh, do, do. So let's look at what the section number is here. So 93031. That's this section number. And what we want to do is we want to inject it in below this row. So we got the blue row, so we want it to come in right here above that white line. So right above, right between these two, two rows is where we want that to go. And the code couldn't be any simpler. It's one line. And if I can get my code to open up. So here we go. Take that section, 93031, and insert after, and then we put in the row. That's it. It's all you have to do. And you probably didn't look at the coding I did in the page before this, let me see if I can get there real quick without wasting too much of your time. I don't think I changed anything on that page. Uh, Mama's special offer. My computer is much slower than yours. I was jealous as I'm watching it go, man, she's moving fast. Wait, I think there's a way I can pause this, isn't there? Oh, well, sorry about this taking so long. I think there's a way I can pause this. Okay. Um, either way, we're here now. So right down here, I think I had mentioned this to you, 
how I took all of these different elements and I put them all together, not those. Let me see here. So this here all the way down to here took all this together and put it into what here is actually the bump item. And so I did a bunch of CSS and everything on the bump, all these other elements. And then through the magic of CSS, Michelle is messaging me um, through that. This is what I did is I took all of those items and put them all into the same element. So I said, take the very first one, insert it before this element, which is is part of uh, part of inside of the bump. And then I said, okay, we're putting that before that and then put all these after it. And that's how I built it out so that in the end you take this and you make it look like da, 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 look like this. And I go through all this in, in the training. Um, yeah, so I make it look like this. And so this entire thing inside that dash line is the order bump. And it just took a couple lines of uh, the CSS in order to do that. I'm sorry, tracking code, JavaScript. Technically, it's jQuery code, but um, but you know that. You're in Jamie's class. You should be an expert on this by now. Um, and then we had the order summary. I forget what else. Oh, I know what I did here. Oh, yeah, that was another thing. I don't know if you saw that. Um Oh, I don't have anything. There's no products in here, so I can't show you. So, all right, that's it. I'll quit wasting your time.